Hi angels. It has been a minute. I'm going at a whopping speed of like one post per year. <laughs> All right, maybe that'll change. I can't make any promises, but I'm working on it. So today what I'm really interested in chatting about and hanging out with you guys to chat about is about fibroids. Um, you got them? I got them. I don't know how many, but I got a big one. Actually, I need to start changing my verbiage. I have a minuscule fibroid. Anyways, so the fibroid thing is, it's a thing and it's a bummer, but I am using some, a new um, routine that I'm hoping is gonna help. I'm gonna see if I can get my candle to stay on this beautiful candle from my friend. Never, I cannot buy a stand for my camera until I've done two videos in one week. That's what I'm allowing myself. Holy cannoli, wait a minute, I think I got it. <gasps> okay, so um, my fibroid, right at this moment is larger than I would like. And it actually is quite fluid. And I don't mean it's filled with fluid. Maybe it is. I, I think fibroids are mostly muscle, muscle tissue, but, um, and it, it just seems to change a lot. So what I know of my fibroid is that it was pedunculated, meaning it's on a stalk corded into the outside of my uterus. I may also have some in my uterus, but this is the one that I know of for certain. And so it's on the outside of my uterus. So as you know, or may, may not know, your uterus tips back and forth during your cycle. And I think my fibroid kind of flips back and forth. Um, so right now it's in a place that it feels quite large. And then there'll be other times of the month where it does not feel large at all. So, um, I don't know. So anyways, I wanted to go through my new routine. It's something, part of the things I've done for years and part of the things are a little bit new. And so I would love your input on what I'm doing. And I don't know, maybe some of this will help you. As you know, I'm not a doctor. Maybe you don't know that, but I'm not. I'm not a doctor. I just play one as a mom in my home. Um, so don't take my advice, just do what feels right to you. As for anything and anyone on YouTube, if it doesn't feel right to you, please don't do it. So here is my hand picked list for what I've been doing for my fibroids. What is happening there? Um, and my big, my main bullet points. So my first one is movement. And in the winter, I tend to not get as much movement. Um, I live in Seattle and uh, I tend to hibernate. <laughs> I mean, like, I curl into a teeny tiny ball. I mean, I do have two children, so I'm not always hibernating. Um, but it's, it's cold here, it's damp, and it's dark. And yeah, hibernation is what usually happens to me. Ooh, I'm gonna add something to the list because that reminds me. Uh-huh, almost forget. All right, so movement is what I've been doing lately and a lot of walking. We just got back from Disney. My parents were so gracious to take myself, my husband and the kids to Disney. Uh, my parents are in their late 70s and this is probably the last trip to Disney because it's not so much fun for, <laughs> for those in their late 70s. Um, but it was so lovely. We had such a blast and I walked so much when I looked at my steps on my phone, which I don't normally look at cause I didn't even realize your phone kept your steps cause I really don't care about my phone that much. Um, but I was like 17,000 steps. Oh my God. I think that's a lot. I looked up how many miles that was and was kind of blown away. And my fiber did get smaller in Florida when we were at Disney world. Um, so I've been keeping that momentum going of walking and walking as many as many miles as I can per day. We have a lake here in Seattle called Green Lake and I love to walk around Green Lake. And I have my Green Lake buddies that I'll either take there and we'll go walking 
or I uh, have my buddies that hang out there that I meet, um, meet some interesting cats at, uh, <laughs> at, at Green Lake. So walking, I've been dancing again, uh, yeah, just in my kitchen, whatever, with my music. And the best part is, and I'm gonna show you, and I think it's the most effective for me for a lot of things, not just um, helping to shrink my fibroids, but, oop, I gotta turn my camera on, is my, oops, is my rebounder. And for some reason, I can't get my, all right, well, I'm gonna turn my phone around. There's my, there's my rebounder. And yes, it's like, I have it out in the middle of the living room right now because we have a pretty small house. And um, you guys gotta know that I'm like trying to show this rebounder because I can't flip my freaking screen right now. All right, there you go. That's my rebounder. Um, I love my rebounder. I've been trying to do it 10 to 15 minutes a day. It's super easy. I don't look at, look at my outfit y'all. I got the jammies on. I don't wear a special outfit for my rebounder. I just get on here and bunk around and I turn on music. Today I listened to Chain Smokers on, pot, or on um, Spotify and you could fly off, it makes you feel like a little kid. So um, I'll listen to Chainsmokers or any other band that I'm kind of interested in for about 15 minutes and just literally just freestyle dance around. Go do your research on rebounders or mini trampolines. There are so many different types, prices. I like the steel coils over the, um, over the bungee cords, because I, I know that the bungee cords can break. Whoa. Um, so I'm gonna get that sand, because I'm gonna do two videos in the next seven days. So anyways, the trampoline or rebounders, do your research, just get what you can afford. Um, but also go down the rabbit hole of the rebounding benefits for your body, the moving of lymph fluid. I didn't, I didn't put a bra on. No bra, I jump around. I want my lymph to move. I want the lymph in my breasts to move, in my armpits to move, my legs. No special outfit, no spandex, just bounce around. You can go down that rabbit hole, learn all the great things of rebounding. Also for anti-aging, because it brings blood flow to all the areas. So those are my movements right now, dancing, walking and trampoline. I'm not going hard on anything else right now. I really don't like to push myself physically in that way at my age because it's, it's unnecessary and I think it ages you, honestly. So uh, the other thing that I'm getting rid of is inflammatory foods and that is a ridiculous subject <laughs> because what might make me inflamed may not make you inflamed. So you have to figure that out for yourself of course, there are some foods that are generally inflammatory that weren't meant for human consumption. In my opinion, grains and beans are some of them, um, but, and sugar, you know, processed sugar. I eat mostly animal products and fruit. Uh, not a lot of fruit, but some, and some raw honey. Uh, what else do I eat? Sometimes I eat some plantain chips, you know. So those are the foods that work well for me at this point. Um, what I can't eat right now and I was testing out recently was potatoes, white, white potatoes. I'm not good with, unfortunately, with nightshades. Yeah, so they gave me, they give me deep, deep pains in my bones. I can't, I, I can't make that to be good. That's gotta be wrong. So I'm just not eating them anymore. Um, so then the third thing, so we've got movement, taking out inflammatory foods, and then castor oil. If you all haven't tried castor oil for fibroids or any other thing you've got going on in your body that you don't want or you're afraid about, you're wondering what is this mole here? I don't want, this is scary. I don't want that. Put castor oil on it. 
you don't like the way your hands are looking, put castor oil on them. Put some gloves on, sleep at night. But for my fibroid, I've been doing castor oil packs. Um, and I think you can get great castor oil packs online. Or if you don't want to um, pay for a pack, just use an old t-shirt, rub the castor oil. Just don't be perfectionist about it because if you're a perfectionist about any of this, having a trampoline outfit before you can get on the trampoline, having the right castor oil pack, then you're not gonna do it. So just put it on your skin and put an old shirt on. Have some dark sheets. I have dark sheets. I'm not married to my sheets. I don't care if they get crappy because I believe in castor oil so much. It has helped me so much for so many myriad of things in my body that um, I don't care if my sheets get ruined. So I do sleep with the castor oil pack nearly every night. I use Queen of Thrones castor oil pack. Um, I have overused that pack. It's disgusting. I should probably get a new one. I have washed it before, not in the wash machine. I've soaked it in a bowl with baking soda and um, some dish detergent, like natural, like seventh generation. And it, it will draw the castor oil out. But this pack I've used straight for a year and it, my husband's like, that's disgusting. You need to get a new one. So I do, I need to get a new one. Um, I also put castor oil on my belly button. If you want to learn about putting stuff in your belly button and how it helps your body, do that deep dive because that is super interesting. That's an Ayurvedic medicine tradition that I think is really cool. I'll put a lot of my homeopathic liquids in my belly button with the castor oil and they just get drawn in. Woo, love it. It's fast. Um, the, so we got movement inflammatory foods, castor oil packs. And the fourth one is creative outlet. I will never forget Christian Northrup saying that fibroids can be, I think they can also be feelings about children and wanting children and maybe not being able to have children, but they can also be um, unborn creativity, which I think in my case is very, very true. So you can see my guitars back there, my husband and my guitars. Um, I'm gonna be doing more of that more singing, more dancing, more YouTube videos, which also in my mind is a creative outlet. Um, birthing the creativity, maybe shrinking my alien baby, or maybe the mothership will just come and pick it up someday. I've been waiting. They haven't gotten back to me. Um, then the fifth thing that I do is homeopathy. These little blue, Actually, I do a purple one. I do a 200 CK of a particular remedy that fit my fibroid profile. I'm not gonna tell you what that is because it probably won't fit yours. You can go and look online. Um, it's an easy Google search for home homeopathics for fibroids. And they'll have, I don't know, maybe like five or six and read through them and see if one of them matches the kind of style of fibroid that you have. Mine is big and hard. Whoop, so lucky. So anyways, the, I do this. This is our little, we call it our ducky basket. My family um, knows that if they bonk their head, the arnica's in here. It, this sits on the kitchen counter. Um, yeah, any main remedies that people are taking in the family that I don't have with my large collection because I have a large collection of homeopathy. Um, any main ones that we're using like right now or emergency ones like carbo veg and as i said arnica or sim um simph officinal which is for broken bones we just keep in the ducky basket on the kitchen counter i don't keep much on my kitchen counter but i do keep the ducky basket on there um those remedies are are um, very inexpensive and extremely powerful and very safe in my opinion. I'm not a homeopath. I'm not a naturopath. I just play one in my family. So you need to do your research on that as I've done. I've been re researching and using homeopathy for 17 years since my girl was uh, born. My little, my little baby girl who's now 17, almost 17. So do your research. See if maybe they can help you out. They've certainly helped my family with 
a, just a buttload of issues. It's been amazing. Ooh, I should probably say also flower essences. Flower essences are really good, like Rescue Remedy, if you've heard of Rescue Remedy. Um, I'll do a different video on flower essences sometime because I love them. I'm just making a note for myself. Okay, going on with the list. Movement, inflammatory foods, castor oil, creative outlet, homeopathics, and here's one, speaking my truth. I think a lot of women keep their truth inside. I think a lot of women don't even know what their truth is. And I think you normally have to get to a certain age before you realize what your truth is. Once you've found your truth, if you aren't speaking your truth, then I think that can cause some energetic blocks in your body. So I'm gonna be working even more and more on speaking my truth with everyone around me. Um, obviously you wanna do that with diplomacy. Obviously there are gonna be people when you speak your truth that don't like boundaries and um, might fight back a little bit. Stay calm, as, don't, as calm as you can, take some rescue remedy. But getting to the place where you speak your truth, I think is extremely important and I'm working towards that every day as I get older. It does get easier as you get older. I'm telling you. Oh, it's so exciting. Pretty soon I'll be able to tell anybody anything. And then the last thing that I wrote on here that reminded me of it, the movement I think outside reminded me of it, is sun, getting sunlight. In Seattle, as you may have heard, we don't get a lot of sun during the winter. And because I then compound that issue by staying inside a lot, which I always, every fall, I'm like, I'm not gonna stay inside. I'm gonna get in a garden all year round. But then when the rain comes, I just go into a little ball. But anywho, sunshine, when it starts to come out and we start getting vitamin D back in February, so it's back because it's uh, the end of March now, I will lay in the sun with as mo much as my body possible and my belly in the sun. And I have noticed every spring when I start laying in the sun again, no sunscreen, if you're not eating a lot of sugar and um, uh, processed grains, you will start to shift and you won't burn as much. So, and obviously you don't want, you don't want to go in the sun when it's like crazy, crazy hot. But um, note the the um, what do they call that? I can't remember. I'll, I'll think about it. It'll pop up. Um, so. I go in the sun and I notice every spring my fiber gets naturally smaller when I'm doing that. So I don't know, I'm sure it's the vitamin D, I'm sure it's the other magical things that sun has, but it's extremely, it's been extremely helpful for me. Last week the sun was out, I laid, fortunately I have this really cool bedroom where my doors open up to the outside and it's self-facing, so I lay on the bed and I can be naked <laughs> in the sun and my neighbors won't call the police. Not yet, at least. So I've gotten a lot of sun. Last week I got a lot of sun on my belly and I, my fiber got small again and then it got big again. So like I said, it's got a little personality of its own. So that's my tips. A lot of my tips are also motivation for myself to keep on this path. Um, I'm really looking to connect with other people that have fibroids, what, what they've done. I'm at this point going with a non-surgical approach. Um, I assume that if a doctor looked at my fibroids, they'd be like, you get a hysterectomy. And I'm not prepared to do something like that. So. I'm looking for more natural approaches if people have it, although I would love to hear stories of people having their fibroids out and how that went. I know that Christian Northrop, Dr. Christian Northrop, talked about a lot of fibroids can grow back after you have them out, and that can be very disheartening for women that spend a lot of time and money on surgery and healing, and then they come back. And my belief, and Christian's belief, I, I assume, is that there was an energetic pattern that cause this fibroid and you can remove the fibroid but if the pattern isn't addressed then 
the fiber is going to come back. The energy pattern is still there. So that's what I'm working on. Um, also have a couple of other things I'm going to be doing for my, uh, my belly. Um, I think I might try psychedelic therapy with a licensed practitioner, um, possibly in a state where it is legal. So I think that could be an option if you're in a place where it's legal. I think, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. I'm not really that well versed on psychedelic therapy legality, but I think that it's going to be legalized widespread at some point. Um, I think it's a good, from what I've researched, it's a good way to remove blocks where talk therapy could take 30 years and psilocybin therapy could take two sessions. So I haven't done it yet. I'm interested in doing it. If people have more information on that, I'd love that too. And this is my little Marnie Angel update for today. And thank you for listening. And if you have comments about fibroids or what you've done for fibroids, please comment below. Bye, angels.